read by michelle fry baton rouge louisiana the american book of the dog by g o shields editor section forty nine spaniel training by f h f mercer parentheses d bolton herald author of the spaniel and its training owing to the space at my command being limited the interesting subject of spaniel training cannot be gone into here in an exhaustive manner however the following directions are amply sufficient to show an ordinarily intelligent man the course to pursue in training a spaniel for work afield to thoroughly train a spaniel for the field it is well to commence when the puppy is about three months old the first lesson to be taught should be that of obedience give your pupil to understand that you must and will be obeyed christen the puppy and always call him by the same name he must learn that when you call he is to come if he refuses go to him and take him by the nape of the neck drag him to where you stood when the order was given saying come here dog's name come here and on returning to your standing place unloose and make much of him repeating his name with each endearment taking a pair of old and soft yarn socks roll them into a ball and fasten so that they cannot come apart then calling the puppy push the ball into his face until he attempts to seize it and when his attention is centered on the new plaything throw it about a foot away saying go fetch dog's name motioning in the required direction at the same time with the hand if he takes it in his mouth call him to you and should he bring it say dead bird or dead opening his mouth at the same time and gently removing the ball the greatest care should be taken not to pull the ball away thereby laying the seed of future trouble in the shape of dismembered perhaps eaten birds and game should he refuse to fetch but run away and gnaw at the ball go to him and keeping it in his mouth draw him after you to where you stood when the ball was thrown then say dead and proceed as before in the event of his refusing to pick up the ball take him behind the shoulders and dragging him to where it lies place it in his mouth and proceed as before directed care should be taken to prevent his mauling and biting at the ball and on his attempting to do so order him sharply to stop that slapping him smartly at the same time these lessons should be persisted in until they are thoroughly understood by the puppy the ball should now be hidden without the pupil's knowledge and he should then be ordered to seek dead at the same time being shown the direction in which to quest by a wave of the hand if he fails to find show him where it is hidden and try again never let him suffer disappointment in his search and always make him carry the ball to you and lay it at your feet he will by this time have learned to deliver without the command to do so hide the ball in more and more unlikely places as he progresses until he will at last find it no matter where it is hidden he should not on any account be permitted to carry sticks stones or other hard substances as such practices would inevitably make him hard in the mouth practice the retrieving sometimes in the dark as this will teach him to depend on scent rather than sight to teach a puppy to heal call sharply when he is walking with you heal dog's name and at the same time force him behind you should he attempt to break away tap him smartly with a light stick or whip and again put him behind you repeating the command while doing so this lesson must be thoroughly inculcated as it is of the greatest importance that a dog should come well to heel and stay there until ordered to high on this latter is the easiest by far of all the lessons to impart as the dog is always anxious to avail himself of the opportunity to indulge in a scamper when the puppy is running at heel say sharply high on or run along waving the right or left hand forward at the same time and run two or three steps to start him off on a warm day when the temperature of the water is high take your pupil to a river bank or pond where the beach shelves gradually under the water you will ere this have sewn some thin shavings of cork into the sock ball fling this to the water's edge and order the puppy to fetch next throw it in so far as to oblige him to wet his feet in reaching it and so on farther and farther until he is at last obliged to swim 
never go away leaving the ball in the water but if he refuses to fetch get it for him and try again beginning the lesson anew whatever determination you may display in these early lessons will be infused in him we will now suppose that our pupil has thoroughly learned the tasks here and before enumerated and that the time has come when he may be taken afield on arriving at covert hie him in and his instinct then tells him to quest for game at first let him range at will so that he will thoroughly enter into the fun but after a time should he go more than an easy gunshot away conceal yourself and oblige him to find you without any assistance this will frighten him and the chances are that he will range closer in the future after a few days of this work when he goes too far away call to him close dog's name close making him come nearer to you should he persist in ranging too far call him in and thrash him saying the while close dog's name close should he attempt to chase a flushed bird call where chase dog and thrash him soundly repeating the command while doing it if a hare is sprung and the puppy attempts to chase it shout where fur and chastise him he must be broken of this evil habit at all hazards time will accomplish the rest it will teach him to work in the direction indicated by a wave of the hand or a nod of the head to range never too far from the gun and when roading a bird to wait on his master an obstinate case of wide ranging can almost certainly be overcome by means of a choke collar and check cord some remarks in relation to the training of ladies pet dogs of whatever breed may not be out of place in this connection even though a lady may not be desirous of giving her pet a finished education there is so much satisfaction to be had out of the ownership of an obedient cleanly dog who will show off a few simple tricks before a group of admiring friends that i fancy some directions on the subject will be acceptable a puppy should not be punished for misdemeanors until he is at least three months old before that he cannot understand what he has done that is wrong you would not punish a year old child why then a month old puppy it is a common remark the children can do anything with jack and he never minds that is all very well but the poor dog does mind being lugged around by the ears or tail punched kicked and rolled over and it is only common humanity to check his tormentors and make their play less cruel when the puppy has made a mess he should be taken to the place and his nose rubbed in it he should be scolded the while and sharply slapped never punish him if sufficient time has elapsed since his indiscretion to admit of the possibility of his having forgotten his fault as he will not know what he is being punished for and no good will be achieved if this practice is adhered to in every case he will soon learn to be cleanly always provided he is allowed to run outside every now and then a lady's pet is notoriously a disobedient dog this is because from the kindness of their hearts the mistresses scruple to use the rod spare the rod and spoil the dog is a good motto not mind you that i advocate incessant whippings but where punishment is needed a thorough chastisement should be given not a few pats and an oh you naughty fellow how could you i do not agree with the cynic who wrote a woman a spaniel a walnut tree the more you beat them the better they be but i know that there are times when the only proper remedy for a dog is a sound thrashing. in dog training what one has to do is gain a footing in the animal's mind by making him understand what is wanted and teach him the meaning of words and signs the rest is easy to teach a dog to jump through a hoop take a hoop of proper size call your pupil to you and holding the hoop over his head wrap his legs smartly with it on the knees and say jump sir jump hold him firmly and force him against the hoop saying all the time jump jump then force him through it praise and pet him giving him some dainty as a reward Try it again, and if he will not go through, force him again and proceed as before. When once he will go through on being ordered, all will be well, and you can gradually hold the hoop higher and higher until he will spring several feet in the air. An important thing to remember is, never weary your pupil, and only teach one thing at a time, which he must have learned thoroughly ere you take up something new. To teach him to be dead, force him to the ground where he has been standing saying dead sir dead 
and hold him there for a few moments. Then spring up yourself and cry, alive again, making him get up when you praise and pet him. Continue this until he will fall down on receiving the command and rise also at the word. Scold him if he moves a muscle while dead and never make him lie more than a few moments at the outset. A dog can be taught to say his prayers in precisely the same way, except you make him assume a suitable posture with his nose on a chair or a hassock and to spring up at the word, Amen. About as good a way as any to teach a dog to stand on his hind legs is to put some stuff of which he is fond in a spoon and hold it at such a height that by standing on his hind legs he can lick it out. While doing this, say all the time, Stand, sir, stand praise and pet him for so doing. In this way he will become accustomed to standing on hind legs alone and in time will stand and walk and hold it. To teach a dog to sit up, it is best to place him in position in a corner and hold him there, saying the while, sit up, sir, sit up. When he will do so without restraint, reward him. In a little while, when he will sit in the corner, bring him out and make him sit without support. Trust and paid for. Hold a dainty at his nose, keeping his mouth shut, at the same time saying, Trust, sir, trust. Then let loose his mouth, say, Paid for, and let him eat it. Three cheers. If you hold a dainty out of the reach of a young dog, he will generally bark at you. Therefore, when he does this, say, Three cheers, one, two, three, and at the third bark, give him the coveted morsel. Speak distinctly and never give it to him until he has barked three times. Shaking hands is taught by making him sit before you and taking hold of his right paw, lifting it and saying, shake hands. Next, say this again, but instead of taking hold of the leg, tap it smartly behind, saying the while, shake hands, shake hands. This ends section 49, Spaniel Training.